Thank you, Brother Tony. <clears throat> I appreciate the way that Brother Tony uh, spoke very frankly about the condition of the flesh. That's, that's good for us to realize uh, how the Lord looks down upon the earth that uh, men and their sins, as Brother Tony brought up in the, as in the day of Noah, when he destroyed the world with a flood, that flesh is, is disgusting to God. And, but yet, from the higher perspective, as Brother Tony brought out, this is God created the need for salvation because he's, he's displaying something. This is his work, <laughs> something that he is doing. So he, he created the need for his own salvation that, he's going to, that he brought through his son, Jesus Christ, <clears throat> that Christ might be lifted up and exalted. And uh, he made the point that flesh must be changed. God's not going to be changed in order for men to be reconciled, but men needed to be changed. And so and this is the, the great work that's in the text here is that Christ himself, God's own son, was made to be sin. This, this vivid description that Brother Tony gave of flesh, how vile and disgusting it is, <clears throat> God's own son took this upon himself. All our iniquities, the sins of the whole world, not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world, they were laid on him. So this is a tremendous expense, as it were, to God and to Christ in order for men to be reconciled. <clears throat> and the reconciliation has been made that the righteous, we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So this, is, this has been done. The, the work of removing sin has been accomplished. So then, now this leaves us with, the, with an exhortation now. What are, what are we going to do with this? I, I, I can't think of a better exhortation than the very next verse, chapter 6, verse 1, beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. <clears throat> God has, he's, he's displaying something in salvation. He's making known his wisdom. Christ himself has been made sin for us. All that is necessary to remove sin and to reconcile the entire human race to God, all that is necessary for that has been done. So it's incumbent upon every person to receive this grace. And as Paul says, receive it not in vain. In other words, he's talking about finishing the race. It's, it's possible to receive the grace of God in vain. In other words, it's to, to once be delivered from your sin, you've got to receive grace to do that, just to, to, to get up and come to God, to, to hear, to believe the gospel, that takes grace. But now that grace given unto you, you've got to continue in it until the very end. So that's the exhortation, brethren, is to uh, glorify God in your living, in your conversation, so that you, the way to, for us to glorify his name is to avail ourselves of the manifold grace that he's given unto us and finishing our race, no matter what difficulties we encounter. And uh, we've had a couple of testimonies of, of this kind of thing this morning, one from Brother Ricky and about some and having to do with Brother Given's message last Lord's Day about getting rid of the Canaanite in the land. These are all of us deal with Canaanites in our territory. This is just, just one area. This is one area where you don't give up, avail ourselves of this grace that's been made available so that we're able to finish the race and glorify God. <clears throat> This is a good gospel message. Thank you, Brother Tony. I'll open it up.